Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 26th of March. India's PM Modi attends Bangladesh's 50th Independence Day celebrations. Water crisis continues to upset Pakistan's past Karachi residents. And US President Biden says Afghanistan troop pull out by May 1 hard. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday arrived in Bangladesh to attend its Golden Jubilee celebrations of independence and the birth centenary of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the country's founder and father of current Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. On the first day of his two-day tour, PM Modi met the top political leadership and paid tributes to soldiers killed in the 1971 Bangladesh War of Independence. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was welcomed to Bangladesh by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina as he landed at the airport in Dhaka on Friday to take part in the country's 50th Independence Day celebrations and the birth centenary of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, Bangladesh's founder and PM Hasina's father. Modi also laid a flower wreath at the National Martyrs Memorial as he paid respects to the soldiers killed in Bangladesh War of Independence of 1971. He also planted a sapling at the memorial. Bangladesh's Foreign Minister A.K. Abdul Momin later called on the Indian Prime Minister and in their meeting reflected on fraternal ties between the two countries. At the National Day program organized to mark the historic events, PM Modi conferred the Gandhi Peace Prize 2020 to Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman posthumously, which was received by his younger daughter Sheikh Rehana in recognition of his outstanding contributions towards social, economic and political transformation through non-violent means. Previously known as East Pakistan, Bangladesh won independence in 1971 after a nine-month war helped by India. Modi in his address paid respects to soldiers of the Indian Army who stood with Bangladesh in its liberation war and said the relation between the two countries will not break down under any type of pressure. Farmer unions in India on Friday called for a 12-hour nationwide shutdown blocking railway tracks and highways as part of their ongoing protest against the new farm laws that liberalize agriculture sector. Farmers, especially from northern states of Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh, have been camped on the outskirts of Indian capital New Delhi since last year against the legislation which they believe will leave them at the mercy of big corporations. Farmers squatted on railway tracks in northern India on Friday, disrupting traffic as farm unions called for a 12-hour nationwide shutdown to keep up the pressure on the government to scrap the new farm laws. Farmers say the new laws, which privatise the agriculture sector, will leave them at the mercy of big corporations. However, the centre government says the reforms will help farmers realise better prices for their produce and bring investment. कपड़े लगा के सरकार वो एक दिखा रहे हैं भी सरकार बोलती है गर्मी आ जाएगी किसान चले जाएंगे सर्दी किसान चलेंगे बिल्कुल दिखा रहे हैं भी जैसे मर्जी पाएं गर्मी आए गर्मी आएगी सर्दी आएगी किसान घर को नहीं जाएंगे जिन्ना जर कृषि करूँ रात नहीं होते। Meanwhile, at a major protest camp in Delhi's Ghazipur, protesters while blocking a highway connecting the capital city with neighbouring Uttar Pradesh state also danced and sang on Friday, demanding government to take back the laws. Police also erected additional barricades and hundreds of personnel were deployed. The farmers have been camped on the outskirts of Indian capital New Delhi since last year, demanding new farm laws enacted by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government to be scrapped. Several rounds of talks between the government and the farm leaders have failed and there are no meetings planned for now. More on news from Pakistan. Residents in Pakistan's parched city of Karachi continue to suffer due to water crisis and have blamed they are being held hostage by water tanker mafias that make thousands of rupees out of their need for water. A report.
Locals in Pakistan's Karachi have lamented government's negligence to address the water crisis in the city, which has continued to add to their woes since past several years. Residents in Karachi's Orangi area said they are forced to rely on few hand pumps and water tankers provided by so-called water tanker mafias, who fill up at a network of legal and illegal water hydrants across the city. They accuse the illegal hydrants built in line is also leading to water scarcity and that authorities have failed to crack down on well-connected individuals who illegally steal water from pumping stations and sell at inflated price, making thousands out of their need for water. सुरतहाल आपके सामने रख दिया है पानी के लिए लोग तरस रहे परेशान हैं लेकिन कोई महकमा इसको सुनने के लिए और इस पे एड्रेस करने के लिए तैयार नहीं है सारे महकमे मौजूद हैं इससे कुछ फरलांग पे पानी आ रहा है पानी मौजूद भी है लेकिन इस बस्ती में पानी अब नहीं है हम लोग तकरीबन टैंकर साढ़े तीन हजार चार हजार की महीने में दो टैंकर खरीदनी पड़ती है उससे हम लोग पीने के लिए इस्तेमाल करते हैं और कोई जरिया नहीं है हम लोगों ने बड़ा कोशिश की लेकिन कहीं से पानी नलके में नहीं आ पाया अभी तक some residents said it was about 10 to 12 years ago that water used to flow through the taps in Orangi and now they have given up even expecting it. US President Joe Biden has said it will be hard to meet the May 1 deadline for getting troops out of Afghanistan for tactical reasons. Biden informed Secretary Blinken was meeting with NATO allies on Afghanistan on how to proceed and said if we leave we are going to do so in a safe and orderly way. The U.S. President Joe Biden on Thursday said it will be hard for the United States to meet the May 1 deadline to withdraw U.S. troops from Afghanistan, but said he did not think the U.S. soldiers would still be in the country next year. Biden said United States Secretary of State Blinken was meeting with NATO allies in Afghanistan on how to proceed and informed if U.S. leave, the departure will be done in a safe and orderly way. Last year, in an agreement with the Taliban, the United States agreed to withdraw its troops from Afghanistan by May 1, and the Taliban committed to cutting their ties with Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups and to not allow terrorist groups to operate on Afghan soil. It's going to be hard to meet the May 1 deadline. Just in terms of tactical reasons, hard to get those troops out. So what we've been doing, what I've been doing, and what Secretary Blinken has been doing, has been, we've been meeting with our allies, those other nations that have NATO allies who have troops in Afghanistan as well. And, uh, and if we leave, we're going to do so in a safe and orderly way. Meanwhile, Germany, who has up to 1,300 soldiers in Afghanistan under NATO's Resolute Support Strain Advice and Assist mission to Afghan forces, has extended the presence of its troops in the country for another 10 months, according to media reports. Germany will now stay in Afghanistan until January 2022. In news from Nepal. Nepal has lifted its quarantine requirements for those entering the country who have received both doses of a COVID-19 vaccine. The move is aimed at boosting travel and tourism business in the Himalayan nation. As an attempt to improve and boost Nepal's tourism sector, the country has amended its travel protocols, removing quarantine protocols for tourists who have been administered with both doses of COVID-19 vaccines. Tourists flowing into the Himalayan nation now have to produce a COVID-negative test report conducted 72 hours prior to departure from flight origin country and documents proving administration of both doses of anti-coronavirus vaccine. Upon their arrival in Nepal, the tourists will also need to take another PCR test report and isolate themselves until the report is out. The new protocol also has made it mandatory to buy an insurance coverage of 100,000 Nepali rupees for tour guides with the visitors. The COVID-19 pandemic, which engulfed the world from early 2020, resulted in massive revenue fall for Nepal, as well as rendered thousands unemployed. According to the statistics of the Department of Immigration, only 230,085 foreign tourists visited Nepal last year, about the same number that came in 1986. Scores of volunteers from across India's Jammu and Kashmir took part in an event this week to promote the restoration of the iconic Dal Lake and clean it off lily weeds. 
Referred to as the jewel of Srinagar city, Dal Lake is a famous tourist attraction and brings in huge revenue for houseboat owners and the hotel industry. Students and volunteers from different parts of India's northern union territory of Jammu and Kashmir took part in an event organized this week to promote the restoration of the famous Dal Lake in Srinagar city. The event aimed at saving the Dal Lake and clean it of lily weeds that damage its ecological balance and take a heavy toll on the fragile ecosystem of the water body. Dal Lake is a famous tourist attraction with tourists from different parts of the country and the world thronging the lake every year to enjoy rides in the famed houseboats of the lake and unwind. Basically, it's a uh, Save Dal campaign start किया हमने जिसमें बहुत सारे corporators ने भी join किया students ने join किया कुछ लोगों ने जम्मू से भी join किया basically it's Dal को तो श्रीनगर का heart देखा जाता है हमें ये पता है कि Dal is a very important location as far as tourism is concerned किसी को कुछ भी पता होना हो जम्मू और कश्मीर में जब भी आप Dal लेक का नाम लेंगे सबको पता होगा और अगर Dal ही साफ नहीं रखेंगे तो क्या फायदा Dal होने का Often referred to as Srinagar's Jewel, Dal Lake brings in huge revenue for owners of shikaras, traditional Kashmiri gondola-shaped boats and the hotel industry. The tourism industry in the region is gradually picking up after being severely hit due to coronavirus pandemic. Hindu devotees are taking part in various cultural and religious programs being organized in India's northern Mathura city ahead of Holi, the festival of colors. Though Holi is a single day festival elsewhere in India, it is almost a 10 day affair in Mathura and its neighboring towns. People celebrated the Hindu festival of colors Holi in India's Mathura city believed to be the birthplace of Lord Krishna with cultural and religious programs on Thursday. Latmar Holi was celebrated in Mathura, where women were seen chasing away the men folk by beating them with sticks, with a huge number of people turning to witness the event despite the coronavirus pandemic. Though Holi is a single-day festival elsewhere in India, it is almost a 10-day affair in Mathura. काल में सब कुछ बंद हो गया था लास्ट टाइम नहीं आ पाए थे अभी बहुत अच्छा लगा होली खेल के मुझे एक लट भी बढ़ा और आगे मुझे लगता है मुझे फिर से आना चाहिए मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा ऑन थर्सडे सम रेवलर्स आल्सो गैदर्ड इन नॉर्दर्न वाराणसी सिटी इन लार्ज नंबर्स एट द घाट्स और बैंक्स ऑफ होली रिवर गैंजेस एंड प्लेड होली विद एशेस एंड डांस्ड टू द ट्यून्स ऑफ डिवोशनल सॉन्ग्स टू मार्क द फेस्टिवल Celebrated at the onset of spring, Holi holds a mythological importance, that of the triumph of good over evil. It is also associated with the eternal love of Hindu Lord Krishna and Radha and a riot of colors. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India's PM Modi attends Bangladesh's 50th Independence Day celebrations. Water crisis continues to upset Pakistan's past Karachi residents. And US President Biden says Afghanistan troop pull out by May 1 hard. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.